Hi, I'm Sunny from Sunlight Curriculum, and I'm excited to tell you about the segment you're going to hear next. Sarita Holtzman, the president of Sunlight, founded this company more than 30 years ago as the original literature-based homeschool curriculum. Many families who start homeschooling with Sunlight do so because they love to read, myself included. And if you're anything like I am, you love to get new TBR or to-be-read book recommendations from people you trust. So who better to get suggestions from than Sarita herself? She reads hundreds of books a year and reviews them for inclusion in Sunlight's programs. And in this episode, she's going to tell you about two books, one that is already part of a Sunlight program and one that's not. You'll get to hear what the books are about, why she thinks they're important, who she recommends them for, and more. So please join us. Well, hi, Sarita. Thank you for joining me today. We are going to talk about two of your book recommendations, one of which is a current Sunlight book, and that is Truth and Transformation in Manifesto for Ailing Nations by Vishal Mangalwadi. And that is currently part of our Bible program in Level J. So can you start by telling us what that book is about and how it impacted you personally while you were reading it? Uh, I'd be glad to. I want to start with saying the reason I wanted to talk about this is because I had always known that the gospel had a huge impact on individuals' lives. But Bishop Mangalwadi, his premise is, is that the gospel also has a huge impact on society, which I thought I had actually never heard that before. Uh, it was one of those where um, he opens uh, as an Indian, he's, he's an Indian believer, uh, he made a trip to the Netherlands to do a conference to figure out how to sit, serve the poor and help things get better. And while he was there, he thought, oh, this is just really a clean country. Uh, he took a, a journey with a friend and they went to a local dairy to pick up milk. And he walked in and he didn't see any employees and he just was flabbergasted that it looked so clean and so beautiful. And then his friend ended up picking up milk on his own, getting it from the tap and then leaving money and change in a bowl. And he walked out of there and he went, how in the world did that happen? He couldn't hardly even imagine that that could, he, he said, it would never happen in India. He said, we would have had two employees and they would have still would have been a dirty, dirty farm, right? It was one of those where he went, so what is the difference? So that's basically the premise of the book, that Christianity impacts society in a lot of different ways. Um, he, um, he talked about it in a couple of different ways. He talked about that it impacts the morality of a country. And that's what he example he showed that example in Holland, and he said it's because uh, the people in Holland are trained from the beginning that we don't steal. They're trained to say the moral code is important, and because of that, you know, you save money that you don't have to have a clerk in that shop, right? You don't have to have uh, somebody come and double check to make sure the milk is in good standards because you believe you're selling good milk to your customers, and ultimately the whole society prospers when we follow the idea that we have a moral code that we should follow. Uh, he also talked about that uh, technology came out of the West and he believes it's because uh, the particularly uh, believers would say, we wanna get rid of toil and we use tools to help us do that. Uh, he had a great quote in there just so I thought was amazing. If I can find it in a minute, there's something like, uh, the Bible um, is the first, the Bible, it, it, oh, let's see. Try to get there. Up. Um, it was the first civilization in history that did not rest on the backs of sweating slaves. Mm -hmm. And the rationale is that we can come up with tools that can help us uh, work more effectively. And I thought that, that, that's just interesting to say. Oftentimes we think, oh, technology just happened, but it comes out of a worldview and he unpacks how that all works. He also believes that the family uh, is, a, is unique in the West. And he ties it to the fact that uh, the West, the Bible says, you know, have one wife. A man was a man should leave his family and marry his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. Right? The idea being that a family is made up of one husband and one wife. He said monogamy is something that just doesn't happen very often in the world. He said just because it's really hard. <laughs> but he felt he quotes a man who says that the social uh, institution that liberated Western women was monogamy. And what he claims from that is, is that if you have one wife, you have to try to make her happy, right? If, if you have more than one wife, you say, oh, you're irritating me. I'll just go to my other wife, by gum. <laughs> so he believes that um, the Christian standards 
in the West have actually helped the family around the world. Just super, super interesting uh, things to do. He basically claims that uh, Christianity has had a huge, huge impact. Uh, he also believes that the whole idea that the West is founded on of equality uh, is because people are created in God's image. And that doesn't happen in, in any other civilization of the world. So uh, the rest of the book, that's kind of his front matter. The rest of the book is how do we heal the nations? And I think in a world where the nations need to be healed in ways that I think we've never seen before, this could be a great resource. And I, I share this book even for you kindergarten teachers who are going, one of these days we'll get to read this book as well. So I hope you can uh, look forward to reading something that's just going to be so interesting and so much fun. So may it be. Yeah, absolutely. That sounds great. Um, and how did you decide, because you read a lot of books all the time, how did you decide to include it in Level J? That's our History of Science program. You know, what was it that made it a good fit for that program specifically? Yeah, I think the passage on technology. So often uh, we're told, you know, science and religion don't mix. And I thought, I really want to bust that false idea. Because honestly, science only started in the West. And it was because Christians believed that we served an orderly God, a God who had formed the universe and expected us to use the minds he had given us to figure out how things would work. And that Mangwadi has a chapter on that as well. And I thought that's helpful in a year when uh, we study science and the author, Hakim, does a marvelous job, but she's not a believer. And she has bought into the whole evolutionary uh, mindset as well. So any ways we can counteract some of that, that wrong thinking, and give kids tools to help them understand their faith is super important to me. Yeah, that is great. Um, also, because that program is kind of that upper middle school, early high school level, you know, are you able to read it maybe to a younger child or is that something that you still think age-wise it, it needs to be an older child or an adult reading that book to really understand it well? Well, I think Mangawadi is very, very approachable. I think um, almost anyone could read that book, particularly if you read it aloud to them. Mm -hmm. um, I think Jay is probably better suited for um, either a student with a real strong interest in science uh, and some understanding of that. She does a good job of, of um, introducing it all. And honestly, I think well, I've gone through Jay several times and each time I go through, I think, wow, I just got smarter. So I'm hoping that everybody goes, oh my goodness, I just have to study Jay. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. I've heard from many people that it's their very yeah. favorite program. Yeah. There's so much to learn there. Is there anything else you want to share about this book before we move on to a new consideration? No. Okay. Well, perfect. So the recommendation that you have for people um, that is not currently part of a sunlight program, but one that you're, you'd like to add is a case for a creator by Lee Strobel. This is not to be confused with the kids version that we already have in level F. Um, so, you know, I know we really enjoyed this book when we went through it um, with my daughter, but how is the adult version different or how would you summarize or describe this version mm -hmm. to somebody who hasn't read it yet? Well, I, I'm planning on adding it to Jay. And again, it's to try to give our kids uh, a tools for that. Uh, my daughter and her daughter just went through Jay. And my daughter said, oh man, I just love this program. But I wish I had a book that counteracted some of the false teaching on science. And Lee Strobel, and we carried the, the level F book. And I do think it's really, really well done. But the J book, I mean, the uh, book I'm hoping to add to Jay just goes a lot more in depth. He covers more of the science. Um, I've talked with other Sunlight moms and they've gone, the books are very different one from another. So you really, really gain a lot by using both of them. Uh, and because we use, um, I think it's good to reiterate and rethink and redo messages that are important. And I think if we can counteract the false idea that evolution is a reality, uh, that's a good tool for our customers to do. So um, I've actually read a case, for a, creator, a case for a Creator twice myself. And I felt like both times it was really, really worthwhile reading. Uh, basically, Strobel, what he does is he um, basically, he's an, he was an invest, investigative journalist and he takes that writing style into how he studies everything. Uh, and what he would say in the beginning chapter is that evolution was the one thing that tripped him up as a believer. And it was one of those things where he couldn't come up with a good answer for that. And he ultimately walked away from the Lord for a while and just was glad to revel in a life of sin. So the goal would be to say, okay, kids, we have a reasonable faith. And that's what this book tries to do. So Strobel goes and interviews a host of different uh, scholars in different scientific fields. Uh, he, he, um, he 
He wants to try to get to the bottom of it. So the images of evolution, he goes and talks with the person about that, but he basically talks through why Darwin's theory doesn't work hold together. It doesn't hold water. Uh, nothing produces everything. It's, it's impossible. You know, we know that as one of the laws of thermodynamics, nothing doesn't come out, <laughs> stuff doesn't come out, nothing can't be. Uh, everything is consistent and stands around. Uh, Non-life produces life. I mean, uh, uh, Louis Pasteur, back when he was doing spontaneous generation, he proved that didn't work, right? It just doesn't even true faith. faith. Uh, randomness produces fine tuning. Every time you have a, uh, uh, mutation, it almost always goes to the worst, not getting things better. It, it just doesn't even sense. And that chaos produces information. Ridiculous. It doesn't make sense. So those are some of the things he would talk about in the book. He goes into the physics, uh, why the word world is so finely tuned. Uh, that can't just have been done by chance. Uh, he goes into biochemistry, you know, that uh, the cells are so complex. That can't just have happened, which is what the evolutionary theory proposes. And biology gets into the whole series of DNA, that uh, it's a code that's just miles and miles long if you stretch it all out. And it, if something goes wrong, that's when we have problems. It's just something that can't be written without a creator. Uh, consciousness, where does life come from? All of those chapters are in there. And I feel like particularly before students get to high school and when they study biology, this can be a really useful tool to help students uh, really get a grip on the fact that our faith is reasonable and we have things we can say to anybody who comes against us. Absolutely, I love that. Yeah, perfect for that age group, like you said. Um, now, when I'm hearing you talk about these books, we've of course talked about their connection to science and I'm a big fan of science myself, but I know some people sit there and they're like, oh, I don't really like science. Is there still <laughs> something in these books for them? Is there still a reason for them to read it? Is it all yeah. super sciencey or are they still gonna relate to what's being said? <laughs> I, I think, um, no, I don't find them super sciencey at all. You know, they are, he takes, uh, particularly Strobel, uh, Mangawadi I find is super helpful because if we wanna transform the world, which as believers uh, operating in Christ's plan and in his call, that should be our goal, right? So for him, it's kind of like, Think through how can you impact the world? And that's really his message. Uh, Lee Strobel, his, his whole foundation is to say, we have a reasonable faith and you don't have to be afraid of the sciences. That's really where he's coming from. Of course, he gets into, you know, DNA is this type of thing, but it's done so that our students are prepared and equipped to do things to prepare them for all of life, right? So when all the skeptics come and all the things come at them, they have, something in their toolbox that they can pull on and actually use. Yeah, so important. Well, Serena, yeah. thank you so much for sharing about these books and um, definitely for people listening. If you're looking to add a couple of new books to your TV Red list, you know, go ahead and check these out. And of course, I think this is a big plug to do level J. If you're kind of on the fence about it, it, it sounds like a great program that a lot of people like. And these two books sound excellent. So thank you so much for being here with me today. Thank you. Appreciate it. Appreciate you doing it, Sunny. Blessings on you. Thank you. Bye-bye. <laughs>